Good day, welcome to the Great White North. Right off the top, I'm going to tell you this video is different. The videos that I typically share on YouTube include months of prep work, research, I develop talking points, then it takes many months or even a year to actually complete. This video is going to be captured all in one day, so it's going to be a bit rough compared to what I usually share. I'm at the beach because the fine folks at Laua, they asked if I'd like to try out a new lens, and of course I said yes, I love macro photography. Laua does a great job of making very niche macro lenses that major camera lens manufacturers just don't. Um, so I'm at the beach because I tried to make a plankton tow at home. This is a nylon wrapped around a clothes hanger that's a loop. This is a milk bottle that my kid finished off. Um, the idea was to do a plankton tow off the dock that is in the background here. Typically you would use a very professionally made plankton tow net. You would drag it behind a moving vessel and you would collect the tiny little life forms, the zoo and phytoplankton in the bottle at the end of your plankton tow net. Uh, unfortunately, here in British Columbia, it is September, which means sunlight is not quite as abundant as it would be in the middle of summer when plankton is filling our oceans. As such, I didn't really succeed dragging this along the side of the dock. I caught a moon jelly. Um, it's actually too big for what this lens is capable of, kind of spoiler there. Um, so I didn't really find the plankton that I hoped to photograph at a very, very high magnification. Plan B, I flipped a few rocks onto the beach, found a few marine invertebrates, and that is what we're going to take a look at today using this amazing lens. It's a little obvious that I have quite a lot of kit with me today. Um, that is because this lens is able to produce some very, very high magnifications. And it's not a lens or a system that you would throw in your backpack and just hike out into the woods or along the beach and just kind of shoot handheld ever. Um, with the magnifications in this lens, well, let's actually just open it up and show you here. Um, first off, this is called the Laua Auroragon. I don't know how to pronounce that. That's my best guess. Um, this lens system is able to create some incredible macro magnifications. Um, this is what I'm going to call your optical element. It goes all the way from 10 to 50 times magnification using a set of what are essentially bellows with a EF mount on the end. And that fell in the dirt, which is not so good. Um, so we've got your optical element, which your bellows kind of extension tubes ext attach to. This is only the second time I've opened this case. Um, so this is 10 times. It goes in like this. This is 20 times. Like this, yep. This is 35 times, and again, this optical element is going to attach to the end. So you have to think about how long this setup is going to become. And this thing is 50 times. So at 50 times magnification, um, you're going to have to have a very, very stable shooting platform. And in the hour that I had this case open earlier in the week, that is what I experienced, or at least what I thought is the... Um, the biggest challenge when using this lens. Um, setting up at home on a desk, um, anytime I literally took my foot off the ground at 50 times magnification, there's a noticeable shake within the, um, the composition. So today we're going to be on solid ground, that tripod's not going to be too far extended, um, and we'll see what this can do. That, um, that was not a fast process. As I said, you're not gonna be taking this lens system into the forest on your back and shooting handheld ever. Um, you know, even at the minimum, what are we gonna start with? Even at the minimum of 10 times magnification, um, you really need to have this as solid as possible. Uh, you will notice I am using a very big um, video centric uh, fluid head here. It's solid. Um, I can lock it down. I know it's not going to wiggle at all. This tripod, um, it's weight rated for many, many kilos. So it's, um, it's definitely up to the task. The monitor, um, you're, you're using these magnifications that are so extreme that um, focus peaking is really going to be helpful. So um, as fantastic as the focus peaking is on the Canon R5, um, it's not really what I need today. So the focus peaking provided by the Atmos monitor here um, will certainly help things. Um, for reference, you're also being filmed on an R5, just so you know. 
Um, light. Light is going to be um, the key today. I'm in the shade right now under this tree. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last, but um, that's just to kind of cut down on reflection and glare. The sunlight by itself is not going to be powerful enough even to provide um, the light adequate at these magnifications as well with the extension tubes. Um, once you get up to like, you know, 20, 35, the light fall off is extreme. Um, you will see that shortly. So we're starting off, we're going to try the uh, 10 times magnification um, and I'll show you how it all goes together. The, the important part here is you are provided with basically a, um, a collar for the, the setup. They call it a lens tube slip ring, which sounds fun. Um, but, oh shoot, it also comes with an Allen key, which is over there. Hold on. Um, the Allen key is important because you don't have any way to tighten it down other than this Allen key. Um, you know, that's not the best design. Um, if you look at, I'll uh, show you some B-roll right now of the Canon 70 to 200. It's a Mark II, the EF version. Um, you know, it has a, a lens collar and it's just a thumb screw you can tighten down. So, um, you know, maybe that would be great to see in future iterations of this lens system. I do understand, you know, the importance that once you have it tightened down, you don't want it to become loose. So maybe the Allen key is a um, preventative method there. So this is the optics. There's really, we'll show you here. Mm -mm -mm. Um, protective thing here is threaded. There is, I'm just guessing, there's two optical elements in this um, extension tube piece. And so this on threads, there's salt water ever here, everywhere here. Sorry about that. Allow you'll get them back clean. Um, these thread together, it's um, quite a few threads, and that's again just to make sure that everything is solid. And then this is your, again, tube slip ring, I'm just going to call it a lens collar. Um, you can slip it through the small way. Um, I'll show you some B-roll here. This uh, lens collar, it has a plastic insert that allows you to fit it to this optical section. Um, and the plastic insert is directional. So it actually prevents any um, downward movement. What I don't have today are focusing rails. That's a big oversight. Um, if you are going to invest in this lens system, buy focusing rails at the same time. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, fortunately, this video head does have a um, forward or back plate adjustment. But even right now, the, the, um, the minimum focusing distance of this lens is about the minimum focusing distance of this lens is about two centimeters. Um, so I need to get the front of this lens barrel a heck of a lot closer to the subjects. Um, I don't really wanna have to stack something on top of here. So we'll move this down. I can't even remember where I left off. It's been that long. I've just been fiddling. Um, I've got an embarrassing stack of stackable objects with me. Um, some filters, some lens body caps. Um, and I think this is probably within, fingers crossed, the two centimeter Focusing distance, um, light. So this light, <laughs> you're never gonna see an Aperture 120D Mark II on a Gorillapod ever again, because that is also embarrassing. But it is a great way to get this light where I need it, um, you know, proper light stand. Your, your light is actually gonna be way too far away from where you need it. Um, I talked about this with the um, 15 millimeter f4 macro lens that Laowa makes. Um, that's capable of one-to-one -one magnification, but when you're shooting at one-to-one -one with a 15 millimeter focal length, um, there's, there's so little space between your subject and the front lens element that getting light in between that small space is nearly impossible. And that's kind of what we're encountering today. Um, thinking about it more, you know, th this is essentially a microscope. Um, if you've ever used a dissecting microscope, you'll know that the, the base plate that you put your um, wet slides on, it's illuminated from the back, basically. It's a backlight situation. So um, with a bit of janky setup, you could probably put a light beneath your subject. Um, but in this situation, I'm just gonna try and get this a bit closer. Um, I'm running, I don't know, this is a 198 battery. 191. Um, so I don't have a lot of time and I'm probably going to be just running this light at full power the entire time. Um, that's also something to consider when you're, when you're filming, you know, any animal. Lights do give off heat, even if it's an LED light. So you don't want your subject under a bright light for as long as you probably want to shoot. Um, you have to kind of stagger it a bit. 
the the air temperature day is is not warm despite the shorts i have wool on underneath it's um a chilly fall day so we'll see how much light we need here and we'll kind of also discover at the same time whether i'm at the required focusing distance um let's see all right so first off the really amazing thing about this lens system is it has an aperture if, again, if you've used a, a dissecting microscope, um, there's no aperture there. So your depth of field is constant. Um, if you ever have tried to take um, imagery with a dissecting microscope, a triocular one, um, you put your camera on top, you really, you're always having to stack images because that depth of field is so shallow. So on this one, um, we can dial it back a bit. Um, let's see where we are here. Okay, so we're starting at 0.15. And that is as closed down as it becomes. And I am still far too far away from this subject. I'm just gonna move it up by hand. And there I can start to see it. And it is very wet. Um, this is a, I'm gonna turn this light off. Again, heat. Um, this is a, po a purple ochre sea star. Um, this species is usually very large. This happens to be a very small one that I found on the piling behind me. Um, and it's wet. I didn't really think about that, but it is very reflective. I'm gonna to have to get it a little closer here. You know, let me just stack these petri dishes again. I have a flatworm of some unknown species in this other one. Oh, hey there, I'm wrong. I am calling this subject a flatworm repeatedly throughout this entire video, and that's not correct. I had tried to very gingerly take a flatworm off the side of a rock earlier in the morning. And so flatworm, not physically, but the idea of it was in my mind. Um, and what I actually found is an annelid or a type of segmented worm. So what you're seeing is a segmented worm or an annelid, not a flatworm. Uh, much like a microscope at 20 times magnification, finding the actual subject um, within the field of view is, is not that easy. It's akin to using a six, 800 millimeter um, telephoto lens and trying to find a bird in flight. Um, your subject is moving, your depth of field is incredibly shallow. It is not an easy task. Speak of the devil, I might have just found it. There it is. And there it goes. Um, a lot of the B-roll you're gonna be watching is just a blurry mess because capturing video with such a shallow depth of field is not easy. All right, so we've moved on to 20 times magnification here. Uh, we're back to the purple ochre star. And I think I'm still a bit too far away from the subject here. So we're gonna add a empty Petri dish just to move it a bit further towards the front of the lens and that minimum focus distance of about two centimeters. There we go, that should do the trick. Ooh, that looks nice. Um, right away you will notice that the depth of field is much shallower and the shake, <laughs> the vibration is amplified significantly. So any tiny movement within the composition is very obvious. Now with the 20 times magnification on this purple ochre star, um, the pedicillaria are a lot more um, obvious. They're much easier to see. The pedicillaria are a very interesting aspect of this organism. They are, it's an effector organ and what they do really isn't that understood. The, the big hypothesis with the, the pedicillaria are they're um, a clearing apparatus and they're used to move things off the surface of the sea star. It's actually trying to escape there. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. That looks pretty fun. So you can kind of see if you had focus rails in a setup like this, the focus rails would act very much like a, a follow focus, allowing you to move um, your focal plane in real time. I am using the lightest or slightest bit of pressure on this plate sliding mechanism um, and it's allowing me to kind of pull focus as required. All right, got the trusty old Canon 100mm f2.8 LIS uh, on here now. With that, let's take a look at this C-Star. There we go. So this is one to one or just about. Um, and you can see the difference is uh, pretty staggering. At um, 10 and 20 times you are seeing a heck of a lot more detail. Um, those pedicillaria are, are essentially gone. You can't see them at this magnification. Um, not to say that it's not an engaging shot, but it's definitely not the same at that higher as at that higher magnification. All right. 
I think that's it for these uh, super cool invertebrates today. I'm going to put these back. Back at home, the beach was a success. Cousteau has joined us. Um, I did have the opportunity to actually look at some of the imagery that I captured at the beach this morning. Um, and <laughs> as much difficulty as I had and expressed in using this lens system, the images are completely worth all the effort. It's now raining. He's a bit wet. Um, I am trying to photograph now the spores. I don't know what they're actually called. The underside of a, a frond, fern frond here. You cannot eat this. Um, and I have the, the beast set up here. This is the 50 times extension tube set. What I've also done is I mentioned there are two of these uh, lens collars and I've set it up with some rails here. And just overall, the whole system feels a lot tighter, a lot more rigid. Um, hopefully that is reflected in the image you're captured when using this crazy magnification. Um, unfortunately, the weather's not cooperating. In addition to the rain, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's quite windy right now. Um, the gusts do pick up. So this little fern frond might, uh, might not sit still. So we'll kind of find out. Um, I will also add that I didn't capture a great deal of a great too many photos of the sea star or the segmented worm. Um, so I've captured hopefully what is a stack of images um, at 50 times magnification. I do just want to show you as well um, how darn it's blown away again. The fern frond is MIA. I just finished capturing images of it. Well, now I can't show you how big it was or how small it really was. Uh, oh. No, that's a sticker. Where did it go? This is where you put uh, John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Where's my subject? All right. Um, okay, I popped the card out of the camera, ran upstairs, stacked a whole bunch of photos, and it works quite well. Uh, 50 times magnification, it looks fantastic. I also captured a shot at 20 times magnification, both of these stacked images, um, th there's at least 40, sometimes 50 frames per image. It is quite staggering how many you need. Um, overall, I, I think this is a fantastic system to, to summarize everything. Um, there's, there's many people I've met in my photography career who their, their scientific role is documenting very small species. And to have a system like this that is, is so much more flexible than an actual microscope, um, it really opens up a lot in terms of capturing imagery. The, the aperture, being able to close down the aperture and create somewhat of a depth of field is, is really quite significant. I think I mentioned earlier, may not have, but most microscopes, when you mount a camera on it, a, a triocular system, um, it's, it's, I don't know of any microscopes that produce um, an image that is big enough to fill a full, full frame sensor and you're quite often left with a, you know, just a circle with some black negative space on either side. Um, so it, it really is fantastic for anybody who's using a microscope currently but wants to fill that entire frame with um, an adequate image circle. Um, you know, the challenge though is a microscope is very compact. It is a very sturdy platform. It's usually an integrated system. Um, you know, that, that sturdiness and compactness, it makes it portable. You can pull a microscope out in the middle of the ocean if you're on an inflatable. Um, you can take a look at a plankton toe right then and there. I don't see this being set up in the middle of the ocean on, on a rib. It's not feasible. You know, you could take it back to, you know, a mothership and, and set it up in a lab there. But even, you know, the swells of the ocean, I, I think this is going to be a system reserved for an environment where you can control a great deal um, of your surroundings. Basically concrete, there's no children running around, no dogs licking you, no waves in the ocean, no wind. Um, you have to have a pretty controlled environment to create powerful imagery using the system, but when you can do all of that, it is so very much worthwhile. Uh, I do want to thank Lawa for letting me borrow this. I've said this a lot, but um, I don't do sponsored videos. Lawa, they really just reach out and be like, hey, we have this great new product. Um, do you want to give it a shot? And most of the time it's a big smile and a yes. So um, thanks again to Lawa. I will be sending this back your way soon and I'll get all of that salt water off of it. So apologies there. Um, otherwise, I think that concludes this video. If you do have any comments or questions, Put it down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.